Hi, I'm Ed Collins. I worked at WKY TV from 1967 to 1970. My roommate at the time, uh, Richard Leonard, uh, was working out there and uh, he uh, took me out, introduced me to Jay Spivey, who was running the stage area. I uh, was hired, uh, doing just about every aspect of radio and TV. Uh, we did props, uh, we did set design, ran the cameras, uh, did lighting. Uh, I think the first day on the job we changed cameras from what they uh, call the TK-40s and loaded the TK-42s onto uh, a new pedestal. Uh, continuation of the uh, color uh, direction that WKY was taking. Uh, lighting was pretty interesting because you were on a big tall platform that supposedly scooted across the floor and you had a hook where you would grab a hold of the lighting rafters and pull yourself along and you'd be uh, carrying these rather heavy, uh, they were called 5K lights, uh, in one arm and trying to scoot across 20 feet above the ground on the other and hang them uh, from, the, from the rack up there. Uh, primarily, uh, there were two station uh, operations. One was the live studio, Studio B, and uh, uh, John Spence, who's producing these, ran the other studio, Studio C, which was primarily for taping and commercials. Uh, 12 o'clock noon, Ernie Schultz, the news director of WKY. Every day from 12 to 12.30, uh, Jack Ogle came in at uh, 6 o'clock. I think you might have heard the Ogle name around town a little bit. And at uh, 10 o'clock, George Tomic. Uh, George and I are still in touch. He's still a fine uh, journalist and anchor. And uh, we had uh, Jim Williams primarily as the weatherman. Uh, I didn't uh, grow up in Oklahoma, but I soon learned that uh, in Oklahoma, weather often is the news, and uh, he did a tremendous job on that as well. Uh, all of them were consummate uh, professionals. Uh, the uh, sports was Mike Tripps. Uh, Mike uh, had a weekend anchor that came in from KONR in uh, Norman named Bob Berry, and later Bob Berry Sr was what he began to be referred to and of course he took over uh, after Mike uh, retired. Uh, at uh, three o'clock on Sunday afternoons we had the OU football playbacks. They would run the film processors literally all night long, splice it all together and we would go live uh, with the OU game from the day before uh, in the studio at three o'clock. We'd turn the lights out and of course Mike would follow along with the film and be commenting on it and sometimes the film would break and you'd have to go running back there and uh, get all the studio lights uh, back on real quickly as we came back uh, live. Uh, the Chuck Fairbank show uh, was taped out there. The starting time as I recall was around midnight. Could go until almost dawn. Later became the Barry Switzer show. Uh, that's where I first ran into uh, some of the uh, people that I've admired my whole life, like uh, Steve Owens and a lot of the uh, OU football players. Uh, it was hosted by Howard Newman, again, a fine gentleman and a consummate professional. After the 12 o'clock news, we had uh, Danny Williams, and uh, his show was called Danny's Day. He uh, was primarily working alone back then. He was later joined by Mary Hart and uh, but he was working uh, pretty much by himself in a 30-minute show. A lot of the uh, celebrities would drop by. That's where I first met uh, Jane Giroux, who was beginning her uh, reign as Miss America. And uh, I still uh, treasure her friendship. She's still a beautiful person on the inside and the outside to this day. I think uh, one of the funnest shows was the Foreman Scotty show, uh, Steve Powell. Uh, did a masterful job back then. The girls would show up in ponytails and pigtails and uh, they wanted him to flip their hair and uh, the, the big thing was celebrating your birthday sitting on the old wooden horse which I think is down at the Historical Society. Its name was uh, Woody and uh, I was uh, running camera off and then and it was my huge responsibility to uh, select the kid that got the golden horseshoe for the day. One of the you know, most important things I'm sure that uh, you can ever do in, in your lifetime. They were doing live commercials back then. I don't remember the uh, gentleman's full name, but we called him Stoney. He would come on and do Cole Haan uh, commercials. Uh, we would uh, pour ice for frozen drinks, whether they would call slushies or slurpees or whatever, and the kids love that. 
And there are some legends on the Foreman Scotty show. Uh, one time, uh, apparently, there were a bunch of kids giggling in the back and he went back and uh, said, what's going on back here? And they made a comment about a kid who had uh, passed some gas. Uh, I asked Steve about that later. He uh, swears it never happened and I've talked to people who say they were watching the day it did happen. I don't know whether it did or not. I was there the day that this happened. Uh, Foreman Scotty was coming down the front row of the kids and he got to one kid and said, what's your name? And the kid opened his mouth and just hurled all the way out well into the studio. That happened live on television. And I'll never forget the uh, interesting uh, arrangement because the kids all scooted back and there was an entire circle of empty seats around him as they, as they moved uh, away from him. One time the, uh, the weather really changed unexpectedly in Oklahoma City and uh, we were hit by a, a pretty severe blizzard and uh, it basically shut down Oklahoma City and the kids, we had I think 40 of them out there at the studio, uh, no way to get them home. So I remember on the 10 o'clock news that night, we had every blanket and couch and an easy chair and a rug and everything out in the studio and we were able to broadcast live uh, these kids on the Foreman Scotty Show so their parents watching at home could uh, rest assured that they were in good care. We also taped uh, Foreman Scotty's series. He had a little uh, series running every day. Uh, people like Danny Williams, uh, uh, Wilson Hurst, uh, Many other people would uh, uh, take part as various characters in this series. I played a few myself. One, uh, I played an escaped gorilla uh, from the zoo, and uh, I did uh, a couple of weeks worth wearing a gorilla suit. So that was taped on Monday afternoon and shown throughout the week. Uh, Wallace Wildlife. Uh, He's still a, a wonderful man. I don't think anybody who was alive at that time will ever forget his character, uh, Effie Mae Farquhar. And uh, I remember on Wallace Wildlife, uh, Don gave away lots of fishing lures as prizes. On Saturday night, we would tape championship wrestling. Uh, we did not set up the ring, that was uh, contracted out, but we would set up the bleachers and people would be lining up from early Saturday afternoon to be the first in the door for the taping of that uh, show uh, that night. And then after that, we were to tear, our, uh, tear the bleachers down and we'd slide the big long boards out. I remember one time a splinter embedded about uh, six inches in my leg and it's still there to this day. So I have a uh, memory of the championship wrestling bleachers embedded in me uh, permanently. Uh, the wrestlers would uh, show up uh, sometimes in their Cadillacs uh, wearing a mask and uh, wore the mask the entire time and drove off from the studio wearing a mask. Uh, that was an interesting time again that was uh, Danny Williams that was primarily uh, emceeing that. Uh, mentioned John Spence in his commercial studio I worked over there also uh, several years. Uh, all the local uh, commercials, uh, Don uh, Mathis, I can still remember him throwing back his head and saying, if you've lived in a furnished apartment, come on down and see our whole house full of furniture. Uh, Ellen or Camber, no one who was around uh, then can ever forget where you'll always find the unusual. And Eleanor was the sweetest lady. Uh, we did uh, Evans Furniture. Lots of commercials were cut over there. And we tried to work some fun in, in between and uh, probably blow off some steam that uh, I remember one time uh, Ed Fazell and I uh, were uh, running cameras between sets and we got to feeling uh, uh, a little rambunctious in the back and started chasing each other around back there on the stage with fire extinguishers shooting them off and uh, we're screaming and hollering and come around the corner and we run right into the uh, director of the whole operation, Joe Jerkins. And uh, he kind of looked at us and I thought, okay, uh, we're either fired or he's gonna laugh and he just said, don't ever do that again. He said, yes, sir. I think the uh, most nationwide recognized uh, thing we did was uh, film the Buck Owens show. I think it went from 1966 to 1972. The whole studio was turned into the uh, ranch at the Buck Owens uh, show, and uh, they'd come out and for about a week would film, and that would last for months on the national TV. Uh, I remember when they were around, there was a string of admirers that always attended them. 
I'm trying to remember some of the names that uh, were on the show. I remember Jimmy Dean, uh, Charlie Pride, uh, Conway Twitty, uh, Susan Ray, uh, Don Rich, uh, the Stamps Quartet, Roy Clark. The show lasted and ran a long time. Uh, the scene was uh, a teenage show pretty much based on American Bandstand, Dick Clark, uh, by Ronnie Kay. Uh, Ronnie was light years ahead in his uh, vision of what this could be, and his wife, Deanna, recruited kids to go dance on the show, and uh, it became a phenomenon. Uh, I worked some of the sock hops that he would put on, but, but the show just was fabulous. I had a little chance to talk to him not long ago, and we went through some of the performers that showed up uh, while he was out there in those uh, about six or seven years that he ran it. Uh, a guy named Brian Highland uh, was on the show one time. Uh, sealed with a Kiss, a Gypsy Woman, but you may know him, probably his most famous song. He talked about a woman wearing an itsy, bitsy, teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini. Uh, the Animals with Eric Burton, uh, Harry Chapin, Bo Diddley, Sugarloaf, the Spinners, Otis Redding, Ray Charles, Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels, uh, Smokey Robinson, The Temptations, Dick and Dee Dee, uh, Jan and Dean, The Kingsman, The Guess Who, Ike and Tina Turner, uh, James Brown. I remember James Brown had a whole cast of attending uh, people and he would just stand up and put his arms out and they would put his coat on and fix his hair and dust him off. And uh, I think one of the funnest uh, acts we ever had live was uh, Jerry Lee Lewis and uh, he had a song called uh, Great Balls of Fire. As I remember when that broke it sold six million records almost overnight. And he was doing it live and we brought in our beautiful piano, whether it was a Steinway or something comparable, I don't know, and he was down there playing and halfway through the song, he uh, stood up and kicked that uh, seat of that beautiful piano back and it clattered against the far wall of the uh, uh, studio and you could hear the people in the control room gasping, but uh, I'm telling you, there was a lot of electricity in that studio as, uh, as he was doing that performance. We had those big cameras and we'd be circulating among the kids while they were dancing. They had big, thick cables, so we had to uh, be kind of careful, but uh, we put some great footage and you can find some of it still on YouTube. I was doing my student teaching at the time and we were right in the middle of uh, all these kids and I remember bumping a, a, a girl uh, in the head with the camera and I said, oh, I'm sorry. She said, that's okay, Mr. Collins. I thought, uh oh, that's one of my students. Uh, all of this was a uh, was wonderful experience. Uh, I went on to uh, the radio news while I was working in TV as well. Uh, I would have probably stayed in that career, but I was interrupted by uh, the draft at the time. They had a little war going on in Vietnam and uh, decided they needed me. Uh, my last night of work for WKY TV and radio was covering the election of the 1970 gubernatorial race. Uh, they assigned me to the American candidate. His name was Rule Little. Uh, Dewey Bartlett was the incumbent, overwhelming favorite. The polls were ridiculously lopsided uh, in his favor, and so most of the new staff was there, and they sent uh, a guy named Jerry Fontaine to take the concession statement from David Hall. Uh, I think the results were so clear-cut that people didn't vote or whatever, but uh, as you know, David Hall upset Dewey Bartlett and there was lots of scrambling to get all the news people back there to, uh, to cover him in time. So I went off and uh, it worked out okay. I went to the military and began a life uh, career of flying, uh, commercial and military, and I wound up doing that for the next uh, 34 years. The interesting thing when I got to basic training, uh, the jukebox uh, there had uh, about half the songs were by Buck Owens, so I really hadn't gotten very far away. And if you uh, can ever find a reel-to-reel -reel tape, I have a uh, bunch of my uh, old newscasts recorded on tape, including the one that uh, I think it was Sammy Moon, the disc jockey, said, let's say goodbye to a Private Ed Collins as he uh, marches off. There was an amazing group of people assembled uh, in the production of all of these uh, events out there at WKY. Uh, 
Uh, I'm trying to remember uh, some of the names. Some other tapes probably will mention some that I'm leaving out, but these are ones that have stuck with me. Uh, Pete Richmond, Willard Hines, Ken Copeland, Bob Hayward, Ned Leach, Lester Tucker, uh, Aaron Britton, as you know, WKY was the first local uh, television uh, station west of the Mississippi, which is why it has the W call letters. And uh, one of the proudest things, they were the first live local uh, color broadcast of any independent station in the country. And it's my understanding, I've heard this story, and so if I'm telling it now, it must be true. Uh, one of the engineers wept as uh, the first color broadcast was in fact shown live on TV uh, from this station right here. Uh, amazing people, Doyle uh, Glazier and his art staff could come up with any design that you needed. Just phenomenal jobs on slates and uh, backdrops and all those things. So we had a, a real family. I remember playing in softball games with uh, other radio and TV stations. In fact, a few years ago I ran into Jerry Park and we were reminiscing about how much fun uh, those softball games uh, were uh, back then. I'm proud to have been a part of this uh, television experience. It was a phenomenal part of my life and uh, I'll never forget the people that I worked with. WKY really was a family.